tale of things to come. Yeah, uh, because like because Vega are, are a lot better team. Things just went wrong for them. The initiation wasn't right. The lane didn't quite work. Things didn't just match up. And Team Secret definitely like Puppy put them off balance at the very very start. Like yeah. the the two dual lanes worked so damn well that. Vega winning that, it would have taken a complete outplay from Vega. Yeah, they had to outplay in a couple key engagements. It didn't work out. Arguably, Secret had better heroes for, for all the things they were attempting early. They they used their heroes to maximum potential. I don't see Vega grabbing a Doom in the early first two picks this time. There's almost no way. Yeah. Yeah, why run also the same draft? Maybe that's also another thing that Vega didn't do quite right. The fact that they uh, ran a very similar draft to what they ran yesterday. And it was, yeah. Pu and Puppy, like, he does his homework. He knows what's coming. Mm -hmm. So Vega's, Vega's Doom Roam worked really well yesterday, but th that last game basically says, okay, Vega learned something new. If you have to move into a tri lane, Doom is not the hero. So they'll have to delay that pick until second round, most likely, um, assuming that they can't adjust it in a different way. Is there something about a Dianix that just makes Dianix more powerful? Because this is the, like, we're seeing the second Nyx ban, the first phase in this series, but it was Vega first game, now it's secret. Uh, it's definitely possible. Uh, Radiant definitely needs to get more aggressive. Uh, push towers, possibly get some ganks going, and Nyx Assassin can do that. Um, it, it's also the fact that Radiant offlane, uh, actually, so Dire offlane, yeah, Radiant offlane is better, so that would mean if secret bans it, that, that's not true. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, I'm not completely sure, but I think it has to do with uh, his ganking playstyle, his pressure playstyle. If if it makes if you make it difficult for for Vega to sit on their side of the map at all, then it, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. I'm just gonna stop talking. <laughs> you good man? So Shadow Team and pick up by Team Secret. So uh, they did this yesterday. They uh, they actually attempted to go for this Lashrak combination with the SD and didn't work that well. It was almost good. It was very close. It was. <laughs> I really, I really liked it, but they didn't quite execute it perfectly. Yeah, uh, there was there was a couple of things that went wrong, and that was. I think we were both agreeing that if the catcher was level up before the shadow poison, they actually mm -hmm. had a higher chance of finding the kills with the less track yeah. combo. If you're against an omni, he's gonna make you magic immune, and shadow poison does so little damage compared to what it used to at level one. So soul catcher, amp up. The Leshrac, the guy that does have damage, that would have been better. At least one point, I think, could have made a big difference. Uh, Vega, I don't know if they're really that thrown off by this. They burn a little bit of their extra time. They go for their first big Keeper of the Light. So that'll be into their hands. They've got themselves some deep push. Not a bad thing against SD Illusions, at least. It can kind of work. Blinding Light's a fantastic answer, but... You know, the, the real good thing about Keeper is the lane pressure you put out makes it harder to push. You can just, if you sit there, if you sit there in trees and they don't know you're there and you throw an Illuminate in randomly, the amount of damage output that that is from a support from safety is amazing. So they can easily do Keeper, Slaughter, Dual Lane, for example, and then transition nicely with pushes and recalls. It's kind of like having an IO on your team, basically. The recall is maybe one of the things that does make Keeper truly OP right now, is the, the mobility advantage it gives you around the map. Well, that's one of the fun things I really enjoyed when I cast the TNC games at TI. I like the fact that you'd always have this recall into a Blink Axe. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do the same kind of thing with the Slaughter if you wanted to. And you just saw Team Secret doing it with MP. Uh, yep. like you just jump in, bring in the Phantom Assassin, and all of a sudden, kills a kill. It's such an easy recall ability, really. He just has to be somewhere in the area and not die, and bring in the carry that has good gap closers, that has the damage. It's a very cool strategy. Maybe they'll have to nerf the ability, the, the cooldowns. Right, 15 so seconds. Team Secret, they're going back to what they did uh, in previous games in this tournament. It's the bounty and the SD. Bounty was not banned out in the first phase like it was by Vega in the last game. So this is okay, but it also is bad if Keeper gets ahead. If he gets like Ag's gem, then Bounty's gonna have a really tough time not dying in every fight. He'll have to sit back and just wait out for track gold. Um, I wonder but, if we also read the fact that Team Secret now are not running that aggro tri lane because they did it with what was it, the Yoga? I mean, they definitely could. Oh, Team Secret aren't. Yeah, uh, Team Secret. Well, aren't. I mean, they can still do dual lanes. I would say SD's not that amazing dual lane hero that he used to be. Uh, he'll be okay, safe lane but aggressive. I'm not so sure. Hmm. But Bounty Hunter tri lane's fantastic if they don't have very much detection. You can just roam between mid and top, for example, and absolutely get as much contribution. Yeah, but they're probably going to have something in there. I'm so wondering like, if Secret go to something a little bit more default, like if they bring in the Luna pickup in their next phase to work with the SD. I don't know if I'd pick it against Slardar. Uh, it's kind of... I mean, late game would be great, I think. Uh, but early game, not so sold on it. It would give them pretty weak disable their team fight. You do I mean some in some ways that's a really good pick because Bounty has very weak team fight, so Luna has a fantastic team fight. It would offset that a little bit. So there is some some credence to that call, I think. There's a possibility that they would pick the Luna. But in terms of laning stage, I think it would be a bit too weak is what I'm thinking mm -hmm. with S D and Bounty. Yeah. Now we'll give a chance of Vega to get in. 
Uh, Tempasol being banned out by Vegas, so taking out another one of the favorites of Team Secret. That's respect right there, and yep. they should. Fred's really good at Timber. It really is amazing how effective he's been with that thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Team Secret now, who do they give respect to with Vega? Vega are not running the drafts like similarly before. Uh, Juggernaut's probably the, the first hero which flags in my brain at the moment. I'm thinking PA maybe, some minus PA? armor strat potential stuff is what Vega could go here. Especially when you open Slardar, it's not only obviously amazing because it's Slardar on Dire, you can take Roche easily, but it, it depends how much Vega wants to go into the minus armor. So clearly they'll grab some other core that does decent physical damage, but what it'll be yet, we have no idea. And that's why what Secret's opening was here is pretty solid. It could leave them with control problems, but they now know that Vega doesn't have as much prediction power for what their cores will be that will counter their opponents. Hmm. Slark ban would have been... Uh, I know, gank potential. It's Shadow Demon is okay against it. I would say moderately good. I'm wondering what, what uh, offlane would have real issues with someone like Slark and now Lifesteal. So uh, I'm assuming a melee hero that can't just jump out straight away. Leash would hold them in position. The Bat Rider is actually still in the pool as well. That's it's punishing against Bounty Hunter as well. If you dust and pounce him, he's usually dead. Could be good in the trial lane too. I'm thinking like Mana Leak, maybe Chakra Magic with Slark could be alright. Do Dark Pack twice in a fight. That could be kind of good. You could cast it and then wait a second and a half, cast it again, and then you'd have Dark Pack for three seconds of spell and vulnerability. That would be really cool, actually. Don't know if they need it. Secret has no spells, though. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe a waste, but you could definitely farm fast with it. Well, team Secret still have three cores. I could have all the spells in the world. Yeah, both teams basically don't know what to predict necessarily because neither team has really revealed anything. And the Disruptor pick guarantees that Vega has really good bounty solutions. His yep. roam in the early game should be shut down a bit more, especially once Disruptor hits about level 3. It also means that Vega can punish really heavily. So Amplification's going to have that Vision Great Synergy with the Disruptor. And then you've also got the Recall, you've got the Jump Around. So they've got big AoE hitters, they've got great maneuverability. And that's just with their first three pickups and two more cores to go. Mm-hmm. So as long as the Disruptor and the Keeper of Light are always in the right position, they should be able to kill just about any hero that isn't that can't go Magic Immune, and that's why they banned out Jug, because they're planning to pick Disruptor. Because if you imagine Sardar initiating on a Jug, and Disruptor gets there a little bit late, gets a spin off, the whole gank is ruined. So they have to... So this may force Secret into picking... They Unfortunately for Secret, they banned Lifestealer. That would have been the next hero I thought of, but um, they need something that'll be fairly survivable against this kind of gank pressure, or has benefits in other ways. And there's a, a, a good example. It's, there's still a bit of a problem, though, because Disruptor can counter the Ember Spirit if he gets the right timing. If it's the Ember, hard, man. If, if the Ember can't get the Lincolns up, glimpse it, it, back into the storm. It's hard. It all comes down to whether or not you glimpse at the same time that he uses his ultimate out. Basically, yeah. and how much time will you stand still? Because if the if the glimpse does go through too early, and you've been standing still, then yeah, you're gonna get an ulti up. But what if he was 500 units back to the left? Then you'll glimpse him, but you won't actually get the ulti follow up, which is what you'll need. How does the synergy work when you do the like slide of fist? Can you spear it out before you're affected by storm? Um, I it should catch you, I would assume, but there's a possibility that it doesn't. Some of those abilities are a little iffy, as we saw from phase shift and <laughs> astral imprisonment, or spike carapace and astral imprisonment. You never know when those splits of seconds you have to do some testing. Oh yeah, if, if you guys didn't miss that, go check out the uh, the vods from day one. That was OD versus Nyx assassin, pain for the eyes. It's pretty good for the Nyx. We get a storm spirit, so we have a chaser now out from Vega. It's pretty good. Um, Storm is a solution against Ember Spirit. Um, he can obviously mobility against Bounty Hunters, also very good. Mm -hmm. He's also got Keeper of the Light mana. He can recall Storm and bring him somewhere, or Keeper can recall Slardar, and Storm can obviously get there if he's anywhere in the area with lots of mana. So I think the Storm gives uh, that's basically three amazing ganking heroes already for Vega. Keeper of the Light to move and get some mobility there. I really like the draft for Vega. So, where, where do they find the stability? If we assume, like most laws we've seen have been going to the offlanes, we're looking for a one position yeah. now from Vega. Who's your stable guy that's able to battle an Ember Spirit in the late game? Well, I, I don't think that's... I, I'm not sure yet about that. I think Secret needs team fight definitely. Because right now Vega has amazing ganking, so either they need to split push, which they can do a bit with Invoker here, push out lanes with Forge Spirits, it's safer, it lets you know a little bit better where Vega is likely at. Um, I think Secret could do something like a Tide for their last pick, just because mm. it could give them some strong early mid team fighting. Because once, if you just win a team fight or two, then Bounty track actually starts kicking in and everything gets easier once Bounty gets his first major item. So I think Secret's aiming for that kind of team fight thing. And Vega, in terms of your question, in terms of their core, uh, 
Obviously, you can't go Illusion Hero. Something, still something that's Magic Immune is is pretty solid. Or anything that buys Manta Style is going to be really happy this game on Vega's side. Downside is, of course, if uh, Shadow Demon gets Illusions of them, it can be iffy. But e like Morphling or something. Yeah, I think Morphling is the hero for Vega, 100%. Kind yeah. of the only downside is that it's they're too farm heavy. They did end up banning <laughs> it, but um, it would have been a little farm heavy with both Storm and Morphling. But it would have been the perfect pick. Hard to kill. High nuke damage, everything they need. They read it uh, by banning out the morphing as a last one by secret, and then a, a straight pickup into the tiny. So they needed something. Like they needed something that would give them the catch. Like that was the one thing I was missing. I was thinking you can't get the bat rider. Well, How do you do it now with a tiny? Because it's going to be a tiny three position. Tiny's catch is more like you catch them and put them in a coffin right away. <laughs> so it's it's more of like okay, you got them, but they're already dead. So I wouldn't even yeah. call it catch. It's like it's so good at getting solo kills, and the heroes that Vega have are very low HP. Disruptor Keeper, he's fast. Blink Dagger and just start blowing up people and that that's gonna limit Vega's ability to team fight and gank If you just kill somebody and you get out and you jump in and kill them again and kill a second person Then the fight's won. It doesn't matter. You don't really have to have good team fight You just have to initiate and kill somebody it's, and it's wait kinda funny that you pick, for the you pick a lunar into something like that Like you're talking about like this instant pop lunar isn't really the strongest hero to survive until a certain point And then she's really effective against tiny very high armor at some point as long as you get Your HP to like 1600 or higher range then that combo ability will not kill you and you should be able to BKB ulti and have a good fight. And I, I'm interested to see if Linus can get that good start off and see how effective uh, Team Secret can be because it seems like Secret are going to be the ones saying, hey, we'll wait to fight, right? Like, like around 15 to 20 minutes, then mm. then you're okay to go? Give forever the fastest Blink Dagger you can, do some Sunstrike setups with Shadow Demon Disruption, and hopefully for Bounty Hunter he can get some track kills. But if, if Vega gets a little off to a good start and the Blink on Tiny is delayed, it could be really bad for Secret here. I'm wondering actually how you get that farm into Forev. Like safe lane, man. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. He's... I don't know if you really want to safe lane him when you got an you got an Ember Spirit that needs a lot of farm well, too. He is... goes he goes boots first. Okay, I think he's gonna side pull a toss like what I was talking about before. Oh, yeah. I just the large camp can go a little bit to the left. Toss him the creep wave and then that'll pull the wave over. At the very least, he'll get a large camp every time with uh, just 120 mana, and guarantee the wave pushes as well. So. Uh, as long as Vega will do a lot of pulling, this should offset it a bit, but it will guarantee him some levels and, you know, oh, he can also do things like toss the Bounty Hunter on a hero to, to uh, uh, close the gap, for example. You know, any levels that he can get, any kills that he can get, it's really good for them. Very smart here by MP. Sitting in the tree line, he's trying to break the smoke of Vega and make sure that, like, a Vega aren't trying anything a little bit ballsy with a five-minute aggressive push, which is what they're doing right now. Yeah. It's one of the best places to scout for that, especially with an SD behind him. Just if you see anything, you just back into the trees, and most people can't land their ability once you get uh, fogged there. Mm. So looks like they are aggro tri laning. Oh, I like this Luna build. That's efficient right there. Six stats, baby. <laughs> All the branches. Yeah, dude. All the branches four, for Luna. Four branches, one circle. That's how you win games. Oh, well, FN. He can have that build. See if it's going to be useful. For now, Puppy, he's put down two Observer Wards. One's watching the mid, one's watching the movement up to the top lane. And they're flagging the fact that Mag is going solo. So already Team Secret have got the information, knowing that Vega are running an aggro tri lane. Yeah, that's the important thing that he was looking for. He cost, it cost him a lot of mana to do that. He's already out of mana, popping his clarity. Uh, so they know what's up. And this will be arguably better for Forev, because he will get guaranteed farm. But then is it going to be good for MP? And I think that's all right considering how big the Blink Dagger could be, as long as they pressure the Slardar well, I think this is all right for Secret. Well, do they even even have a chance to kill off the Ember Spirit on the bottom lane? Like, you might better push him a little bit out of lane, but if you have SD Disruption to save, and you've always got the Flame Guard, well, the damage output onto MP is not going to be massive. It, it will because they have right clicks, and that's the big thing. Two ranged heroes with, with uh, Luna Aura, and Ember Spirit only has one armor. Very, very low armor hero. Max really trying to win that top lane. We saw the double crush up there before. He's hitting both for Rev as well as Puppy. But he's only got a mango left. There's not a lot of mana for him to work with. But we're going to keep our eyes as well on this bottom lane. Oh, Rev could die. He's low, Mag. He's got the crush, Ooh. but it's out of range. Okay. Uh, I... Mag will take the damage from the tower and be forced back. That was actually pretty costly. Uh, Rev is behind, but losing that last bit of mana, mana could make a big difference. Pi trying to zone as best he can. This is exactly what he wants. Just 1v1 engagements against weak little coddles. Puppy ended up denying himself to a neutral creep as well. All that mana which he burned at the start. Obviously doesn't care too much about it when he's just going to die and get it back again. Yep. Buys up wards, goes back to lane. 
And this time he's going to be able to pressure mid. There is a sentry to defend Iceberg, though, and I'm sure he's been happy that he does have a 1v1, but it's getting slightly more last hits than Invoker is. That's a really shallow sentry, too, and, like, nowhere, nowhere near the lane. Yeah, it's just a defensive. Oh, Perev, so low. The avalanche is going to connect. Perev. Rev lost his lane is because he had to buy boots first, expecting a try lane. Instead, they go aggro, and now they get to pressure the Ember Spirit, deny his farm, and they're getting kills with just all their right clicks. Mid lane, Mag comes out of the Invis rune. He's looking for the kill over on the Invoker, and they are probably going to get the first place down. That could have been a sun strike on a disruptor to get him experience. Instead, the gank from from Mag came at the perfect time. And why would he not just stay top? I mean, how do you expect that? He does. You think he would just stay top? He got a kill. I guess he was low on HP. Wait, hang on. Hang, but... They should have seen that though. The observer was watching the top rune. It's possible that he TP'd in or something. Maybe mid one was being too aggressive. Maybe he smoked as well. There's a lot of things that could have led to it. Mm. But that kind of rotation absolutely changes the game. Mid one doesn't expect it. He ends up dying when everybody else is bot lane. Super unpredictable gank. Now they have a crack over at MP. As uh, well, quick slide of fist needs to get back into this into relative safety. Oh. What is this? I came here for a battle. Zone supports rather than pull, and that that means level one, no save there. Okay, so for Rev is still managed to get a lot of CS. So the tiny is still looking. I'm not gonna say great. Like he's still got boots as well as a as well as just a stout shield with one death, so losing a little bit of that money. But we're finding experience onto the tiny, which means the rotation, the things that, that can pop off the disruptor and the keeper of the light quickly, is still online for Team Secret or coming online. It is, but we'll see how it works. We haven't seen a whole lot of tiny lately, just because of raindrops, most likely. Uh, if the supports just carry raindrops, every single time he tosses them, it's 120 damage less. That can make the difference, especially these first couple levels. And because they're doing so well in their lane, that means faster boots, faster raindrops, Ooh, more stats. Courier's got an empty bottle on it. It means he'll have more than enough time to get the third hit in, which is what he requires to get the kill. So the bottle is now lost for the mid. It's a pretty nice gain, but MP could die again here. No, he's going to be just fine. Still just a level one glimpse as well. Yep, no huge threat there. I was way off. The big lane is really still Mag versus Frev. Frev's armor is so low that every crush that Slardar uses, he does a huge amount of physical damage, although he gets him low here. <laughs> Ferev tries to have a crack himself. And the other big lane, which is oh, working well for Secret. Uh, well, okay, bottom lane, MP. Once again, he gets put in the wall. TP supports on the way. MP, very low. Pilot, I just can't help in time. Uh, but that mid lane is 28-14 up against 18-6. Mid one's actually, even with his death, he's still on top of Iceberg. Makes sense. I mean, Storm wants to get in melee range to use Remnant. So every time he would... It allows mid one to right click in like four times, it's, and especially with the forge spirit on top of that, there's no way it's gonna be a good trade for iceberg. So, mag's rotation's coming in. Quick sprint down mid one. Okay, <laughs> he was expecting mag to keep going for him, so he burns a decent amount of mana just for the sun strike. It would have been a really sick play though, especially with bounty rotating in. Sun strike would have turned that. It's a good move. We're gonna start with disruption on bottom lane. MP gets the searing chains off. FN burning down quickly. The poison's already on him. Pylai dies. Still the man on the front lines. They glimpse the Ember back to give space to FM, but Seam is now completely burned dry. Unless he's lucky enough to get a regeneration rune. So at least they almost got a kill for once, but MP's still having a terrible lane. What is Puppy up to? Oh, Seam is denying himself. Puppy, wait, did he see? Did he see? He's gonna go in! He Still low. Ah, it's a good attempt. But he threw it before. Him. Yeah, of course. I guess it's it's, it wasn't going to make it. That was clear. Probably You wasted our observer's time. Come on. He could have been looking at something like a hero teleporting into a lane. A phrase. It could have been amazing. That was close. <laughs> Rev's got arcane boots. Uh, a lot of mana potential, but this oh. could be his death. Oh, he went aggressive there. With the amplification, there's too much damage. The support arrived just at the right time. The yeah. first big rotation from Vega on their supports. 
Yeah, tiny feeling the outplay there. He's like, I think I can kill Mag this time, but the supports got there. And a little bit of aggressive play was the wrong thing to do. So this time it's Vega who are the ones having the... The good laning start. I yes, would. yes. I was trying to think of like the better way of putting a word to better roaming in the early game. Effective rotations. There the superior rotations, there we go, that's yes. exactly it. They're the ones with the superior rotations this game. They, they really are. Their laning stage went amazing, and their supports are moving around. I mean, if you get solo kill in your lane, 1v1, and then Mag goes mid and gives your, your mid-hero kill, it's just the advantage, man. It's so much. And he just appears in random places. In some ways, Mag is getting huge value out of having Slarder over here like Batrider. Batrider is very oh, stable forever. and forced. The loop around from behind. FNG won't see this coming. Oh, Willy, it's night time. Okay, the pings are finally coming out, but FN FNG backed out. If they don't observe reward, for example, that's a kill. Now, Puppy's waiting forever. I don't know if he actually got the timing right uh, to know that the like the courier is going to be coming back out again. Oh, he could toss Mag back, throws him back. Yeah, bottom lane, Mag into a trouble, but then again, MP amplify. <laughs> Once he might have killed MP, it was very close actually. Puppy's moving over. He's trying to line up a target for a Sunstrike with the Invoker. So the Sunstrike's going to connect into the Call Snap. The Jump Away Iceberg having his level 6 means an easy escape when these things do happen, but it pushes him away from the 8 minute rune. So going well for mid one. He's almost got his Midas on top of this. 55 last hits, the, high, the last hit leader in the game. And in terms of net worth, he's way ahead also. Oh, Fred with an Invis. This is almost guaranteed to kill. But who will it be on? They got a squishy keeper of the light level four mid. He's gonna sit exactly oh, where. Get iceberg in the jungle. That's where he's headed to. He knows storms on mid, but he's gonna go back and heal at the same time. Very unlucky. Unless he saw forever coming mid, in which case, that's why he's going to heal fast. Well, the only observer what they've got that could even see something like that is the one on the bottom lane inside the jungle. Yeah, but you know, going to a rune could be an invis, could be a haste. Play it safe, go heal. And instead, they're going to move up to the top lane with the tiny. Puppy's already here. Sunstrike should be back up by now, and, uh, well, it may be enough anyway. It's a 3 3 combo, and they go. Oh. Very Would have definitely died, but a little greedy to get the support instead. Could have had a huge gain for Secret. Gonna go on bottom at least. Yeah, that Sunstrike's coming in again. Hits pretty heavily on Maggie, so wants to run forward, only a half life. Gets a crush on Pilot. <laughs> And yeah, and there's still the spirit to get out. That it, it's such a good counter. You just wait for the glimpse. You throw the remnant. As long as you're not getting ultied, you can get out. Is that sunstrike up? Icebreak's farming right underneath the radiant observer ward, and you've got the movement over. Yeah, Tiny's Ooh. making his play. Oh. Iceberg will jump up. The avalanche will miss. Iceberg, however, didn't get up the hillside, which will allow for it. This is Iceberg. That's quick one and give himself the space to get away. I really like the item build that that Frev went for here. Like, Tiny is naturally really fast because of grow movement speed, and then he buys a Windlace on top of that. So he's actually running around. It doesn't even need a Blink Dagger. He's just making it work with Raindrop, Arcane Boots, and a Wand. I still find it counterintuitive that uh, Tiny gets faster the bigger he gets. Well, it's because your limbs get longer. Therefore, you can take longer steps. The longer Everybody stride, that. But, yeah. then, but then you increase your weight. Yeah, but also and your rock, what about your rock muscles? Your rock muscles get bigger. Aerodynamics, I suppose the thing was able to make it pretty quick. Aerodynamics only matters if you go really fast. It's exponential. They're going for FN. FN turning for that one little CS. Allowing Pong. That's, that's the power of Soul Catcher right there. That hit really hard. I mean, obviously they had three heroes nuking, but... But Soul Catcher, man, SD is still a good hero. <laughs> Level one doesn't matter. Still good. It's great, 20% of any damage increase, and it stays through BKB usage if you cast it early. Seems like one of the major problems for Vega, I'm, I'm looking at that net worth, and you see who's on top. 5,600 on the Invoker himself. They're getting super far behind, actually. Yeah. They've been worried about the bounty ganks, their movement has been... They're waiting for the Spirit. Iceberg, he needed to bait the Spirit, jump down, but with the Spirit's all the way back past the T1 tower. Yeah. Very <laughs> smart by MP there. Against a Disruptor Glimpse, you do not mess around against that skill. 
Oh, disruption again. As uh, in comes Puppy, a little bit extra stun for Rev's got the toss, the sun strike, it hits the mark. So mid one will fight the kill. Okay, well, Iceberg's gonna be happy with that one. He is farming quite slow though. It's 12 minutes and he's only got 51 CS. Really had a lot of trouble in the mid lane, but that's the issues with Storm. Some heroes, he just doesn't match up very well against them. Well, then you think he can just get the kills on the rotations. Like, that'll work for him, but that hasn't... Like, he's got two... Yeah. Like, it's still two for zero on Iceberg. It's not bad for him, but... There hasn't really been rotation opportunities. The only person that's been rotating all game is Slardar. And Disruptor's moved a little bit, but he just now got a six. The gank didn't work bottom. That delayed six definitely impacts things, but that's because they aggro tri -laned. That's why it happened. Ether Lens for Tiny is his first item. Really? Um, does, it's, I instead, wonder... of, instead of like maneuverability, like Shadow Blade, Blink well, Dagger? It amps your spell damage. That's pretty minor, but I wonder if it gives you greater toss acquisition range as well. You can also toss farther. He's going to maybe toss in for a cold snap is the goal. Oh, oh maybe that. it even also increases Avalanche as Iceberg gets hit from a mile away. That was pretty value. Avalanche looks like a regular cast range now. It's about 600. With that cast range, it's that's your initiation. It's a, it, it delays getting there. It's a one second stun. And if you get the toss after it, it's a massive amount of damage, especially with more and more grow levels. This is a pretty cool build. This is innovative stuff right here. Puppy's getting a little bit of vision. Okay, now he's also scouted out. Mana leak, dust it up. He'll make it. He's got this. He's done. A very dead hero. It had it had it had to bite him in the at some point. Like Puppy has been moving behind the lines. I, if you had a heat map for Puppy, I'm fairly certain like 60 to 70 percent of it is going to be on Vega's side of the river. That's the place to be. Got to know where Vega is. That way you can outmaneuver them. Well, and MP glimpses back this time with a what? Dyer's top tower has fallen. while the glimpse sends you back. So it's like the window is very small. If, you, if you're trying to initiate the, the cast... Okay, let's watch it again. We're almost going to slow this one down. So, yeah. The only way it works, if you try so, to cast it as you go back, then you're silenced. So technically, the phone he was there, but he the, the teleport, it's kind of like fountain hooking, basically. He basically fountain hooked himself out of the glimpse, if that makes sense. I guess you'd have to be like, it's a bad analogy if you haven't been watching Dota for like four years like we have, but, you know, sometimes the spells will complete no matter what, and in that case, it's bullshit. <laughs> it's one of those things like, okay, that's how it, there's a lot of inconsistencies with things like X marks the spot, glimpse. Storm long jump in, going after Pile I Die, trying to fend himself back behind the tower. Most of Secret are not here because they're all looping around themselves. They're coming in through the long jump. Puppy can slip through the small little crevice, but MP and Pharrell looking for their initial target. Matt. Oh, gets out of position like that, it's over. Meanwhile, mid one is having the time of his life. He could have come back straight away. He's got BTs already on him, and it looks like... That's a Yule's build. Is it, is it a Yule's build, or has he got such a great start he could even go straight in for, a, like, a side? Uh, no. It's definitely gonna be Yule's. Gives him lots of movement speed, and also gives him one-shot combo against heroes like Storm, who are normally very hard to kill. And it'll save him if he gets amp damage, he can Yule's himself. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really good things about it. Definitely can one-shot these supports endlessly, so that's what he's aiming for. And mana regen, more cast, more push. Very beneficial, and also protects him against the potential storm market, depending on when he gets it. So I'm seeing a lot of perks. Always, it's, a lot of perks. It's real good this game, definitely. <laughs> if he's cool with sunstrike combos. So looking pretty good for Secret. Again, they did lose two supports there. Shadow Demon dying under the tower, but that's tactical. That's not a safe place for his cores to be. The supports go there, get free experience, free farm, and if they do get ganked, oops, you lost your least. Oh, forever. That's a long, long glimpse. This time the storm will have this effect. But where's your follow up? Running 
extra 400 right at the end. Trev should have lived, but goes down. I don't know what he'll buy next. Though. Spirit jump in, spirit jump out, but it took too long, so Mag was able to blink away. He took no damage while Ember was doing his little uh, pirouette around him. Well, they get control of the Radiant Jungle again, at least, but don't know if that'll be enough. Like, mid one's farm is just getting out of control completely, and this is the best thing you can do with Exor Invoker, and one of the reasons why it's so strong. Push lanes with Forge Spirits, farm the enemy jungle. If you get into some trouble, you cast your spells and get away. He could try for Iceberg Kill here. I'm kind of liking the gem of true oh. sight, the jump away. I mean, he's got enough distance here. The Courier almost doesn't. Puppy's on his way over, but he don't think he'll reach it in time. That was super close. If mid one had a, oh, a spell ready. He's gonna find Iceberg. Iceberg has no mana. The sun strikes right on the mark for the Churkin Pop. That was nicely done. But hard for Storm. That he should be farming right now. Instead, he's dead. He's actually doing great KDA 4 1 and 1, especially considering the laning stage. But the Bloodstone is not done yet. This is not a 12 minute Bloodstone. Mm -hmm. Forever would have had a Bloodstone. <laughs> Forever does get Bloodstones at 12 minutes. I'm, I'm sensing bias from you, Perch. <laughs> no, that's more sarcasm. I mean, Iceberg's honestly playing Amazing considering the start. This kind of KDA is super respected, but he, it's just harder to farm because he knows that he does have to worry about heroes like Bounty Hunter doing that kind of pressure. So how is he meant to get effective? You've got a Storm Spirit running around just trying to build up a Bloodstone for now. But, he, but, he, but he, can't, he can't control the Invoker. He can't disable the Invoker. Like The only one who can really do that is the Disruptor at the moment. Well, you don't have to fully disable him. You just have to do things like Chain Stunts. So it all comes down to map movement, not getting ganked. I mean, in the late, late, late game, Vega is definitely stronger. Here they go. That Observer Ward from the Dire side let them know exactly where MP was moving. Blink, crush, there the storm go. is down. The Guaranteed stun, guaranteed static storm, kill the enemy hero. And that's what they were waiting on, Blink Dagger on Slaughter. Mike's having a fantastic game though, I really feel like he's doing the most on his team. He's won his lane, he's helped win mid lane, he's guaranteed farm for his carries. Like, everybody, the KDAs on Vega as a whole are actually fantastic, but Secret is just completely out farming and out pushing Vega. And it's forcing them, when they want to gank, it's forcing them to defend. They're just split pushing basically. And they have vision advantage because of bounty. That's that's why nobody wants to play against the bounty hunter on secret. They could get puppy oh, here. Bottom lane. Yep. You jump in by iceberg. Seam is right there. You put the ball. Raindrop value, they will get Sioma at least. Yeah. I think that's all right. I mean, they may lose another one though. Like Mag is on the run. He's got his sprint up. That's hard to catch. He's got the Yules. But mid one's oh. got so much movement speed Whoa. as well. He catches up the Yules into the air. That slaughter misclick there. He's probably trying to click up in the fountain, but clicked on the cliff here. Almost for sure, because he turned and backed, and they got within range of the Yules, and that's when things ended for him. He should have been fine with Sprint and Blink Dagger. Really unfortunate. They're prepping on bottom lane. Jump forward. Keeper of the Light. What have you really got to give here? Not much. Make him leave. Nice job. <laughs> but it also does give Storm Spirit the lane. Um, I don't even know if he's going to go... I think he still has to go Orchid. I, I didn't want to say it, but... <laughs> I think he still has to Orchid, but there's so many good solutions on Secret. Oh, Seema. Yep, actually yeah, we grab MP, no Spirit of Babel, so Iceberg! Okay. Another big kill, coming the way of Vega, finding more of these Secret Cores just slightly out of positioning. That and was, punish him. That was sick plays from Sioma, actually. Like, and that's why it works. If you keep pressuring Mag. an Ember, he's gonna run out of Spirits. Solo kill, he wants something. He's looking up towards the top lane, but... Uh, he, he had no vision. Like, if he had vision of Pile I Die, then he would've just gone on him. And now they're dewarding with this early gem that FNG purchased. Who needs eggs? Just a little gem work and that does everything. Well, once FNG's got the eggs too, like having a little bit more true sight, having a little bit more heal and the defense too. Sunstrike right in the money. Avalanche tossed. Smack gets exploded.
gets him the slaughter kill, but I don't think that's worth it at all. It's giving a bloodstone charge to the storm spirit. That's more mana. Uh, like we talked about in the draft, secret does not have a lot of disables. They're limited there. So storm spirit just keeps buying HP and more mana regen. Secret is not going to have a single target, tons of damage over time carry. It's yep. Ember. He's more of an AOE cleaving sort of carry. It, it, it kind of turns this into like a like a split push kind of thing, plus with a little pick off here and there from the tiny. Yeah. But because they've given all these kills over to Iceberg, like, it looks like they're going to revenge kill now. Uh, the jump him. There's the Yule Scepter up. Can he get away from this? Where is the maneuver? Yeah, that was a really solid gank. Just Tornado, um, the, the Meteor with Cold Snap and all those right clicks, guaranteed he's perma-stunned. But normally he would be able to survive there. Definitely could have suicided, but he thought he could make it. I don't think he'll make that mistake again. But if he would have suicided there, that would have been massive for Vega, actually. Because he wouldn't fall for that again. BKB's up for the Luna. They get the dust reveal over on Puppy. Use the Storm, get him in, and now FN's got a choice. As soon as Tiny shows up, he's going to kill your squishy heroes. And that is exactly what we saw. The Cold Snap, the amount of counter, it just killed Storm two times in a two minute period. That's the only disable they had, and it worked. It's just incredible that mid one made that work. The game sense to know that, to exploit those little timings. It's and like here we you, are again. You learned something new about Dota. Like, the fact that they even killed him was amazing. I think they must have. Yeah, they got yeah, a Thunderstrike. Thunderstrike on him. That was the only thing, because he was gone. Like, he was totally gone. On 50 HP, yeah. and then the last strike. Is what got the kill. Uh, the Luna kill was the big one, really, uh, by Frev. It seems also a little bit too premature from Vega. Like, you see the courier moving back right now on the mini map. It had his BKB. Oh man, that would have been so nice to have there. Yep. He died at 60% HP. But they, they started the fight just a little bit too early. But then again, Secret also did force it. The opportunity was Puppy being too close, dusted up, but they try and kill him. Yeah, and the original problem, there's still a tier 1 tower up there. And if that wasn't there, there's a high chance that Secret wouldn't have reacted as fast. And that just would have been a huge team fight win for Vega. That's another remnant of the Lanian stage going bad. Now, the fact that Vega have only claimed one tower, the bottom tier 1 tower in 24 minutes. Yeah, right. There's not much to HP on it, 129, they could even deny it, but... It's so it's big for Vega there. too. Like, like Vega have a great lineup where they can just go in for Roshan. Like, you've still got amplification, and you've got great cover around Roshan. But they just haven't had the opportunity. Yep. So All the space. Definitely not. So until they get to that position, then it's still going to be a bit iffy. That last team fight loss is huge. The two deaths on Storm Spirit. He was up to like 16 Bloodstone charges, now back to 7. Like, he should have had his Orchid by now, considering how well that little time period went. But those two deaths, due to just one skill, it kind of changed all of the momentum that Vega had going for them. And they're going to try and fight to get it back, and they've already fought pretty hard to try and reverse the net worth advantage. Uh, you see that uh, 25 minutes in, and Vega... They're basically competing two cores with the three of Secret. Yep. And those three cores have track gold. And it needed to be Storm Spirit snowballing real hard right now. Because Invoker is just going to get scarier and scarier if mid one can be the Invoker player. And I think that he definitely can. That's one of his big signature heroes. And with Atani supporting him with a fresh Echo Saber, the damage output is starting to pile up for Team Secret. Yeah, it's free double damage, basically, every five seconds. And then you make more tinies to do more work. So at least Luna will finally bring down that Tier 1 tower on the top. But they're losing their Tier 2s in mid and bottom. So the last remaining out of towers for Vega, they're dying very quickly. But because now that tower is gone, you do have the Storm Spirit with his Orchid. If they can get the Tier 2 top, I think I'm alright with this. They're going to pull but him out right now. It's just not safe, yeah. They just can't stick around, so that's a tier 1 for two tier 2s. Not the best trade. <laughs> the poison actually got the reveal for a moment. Oh, we'll kill mid, and he gets him. Frev jumping in, killing the Keeper of the Light. Oh, they can get the gem back if they kill him here. This is huge. Yeah, the crush, the amplification's up. He already let the Orchid go.
we need to get that killing out right away. But all of these aggressive wards that Seeker just prepped, if Vega can just get their heroes alive, deward those wards, the game goes back to neutral. <laughs> Siri chains FN. They're trying to bait a BKB charge out of him, but the Storm Spirit looking for a little. It's just a bounty hunter. I really feel like they could have gotten that kill. All it would have taken was ball lightning, the, the shuriken, and a mana leak on puppy and he dies. I think they should have gone for that personally, but... Either way, amazing fight for Vega. The fact that they got a kill out of the Luna BKB changed everything. If, if MP didn't die there, Vega absolutely loses that fight. They're barely able to eke that out. And then a couple more mistakes lead to Vega getting tons of experience gain. And again, more items towards Storm becoming out of control. Yeah, having him getting that huge injection of money. So right now he's got the Orchid as well as the Bloodstone. Can start building up his charges again. But the Agon himself to also arrive for the Keeper of the Light. Mm -hmm. So now you can have like a lot of recall. You've got Blinding Light to now deal with as well. Not to mention the fact that, uh, wait, yeah, uh, he'll, be, he'll, be, he'll be bringing the heal and the vision during, during the fight. So, goodbye wards, basically. All of the wards that Seeker had just placed down are now gone. With that said, they didn't buy the gem in the first place. They could get their own, but <laughs> yep. it still will cost them. First Battle Fury, almost up for MP. He is very far behind. 28 minute Battle Fury? <sighs> you know, he's, he's yeah. having some inconsistent games. I hate to say it, but I'm thinking of the last track game that we saw yesterday. And now this game here, he died a lot of times in lane, he is getting picked off. And if he just had three less deaths, I feel like Secret would just be ending the game right now. Mm -hmm. Instead, they have to rely on mid one to be still the big man on the front lines. Having that Lincoln Speed to protect him is going to make things a lot easier for him. Yeah, absolutely will. And make things a lot harder for the Storm Spirit, unless he can get that next item, like something that can trigger the Lincolns. Uh, he's going for a BKB instead. Because you know Cold Snap. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. scary stuff. <laughs> Not to mention all the magical okay, pop which is coming out from the Tiny until he picks up an Ags. Yeah, actually, I think it's a it's a fine build here for Storm. They just need to keep winning team fights and not dying is with BKB is the way to do that. Team Secret are grouping up. Looks like a smoke maneuver as the Kurg is bringing it in right now. They're letting mid one farm the last bit before they do this. Must be nice knowing that you can smoke is anywhere a... on your side of the map because your opponents haven't crossed the river in like 20 minutes. Did they actually slip in for the pit? That's what it's like. Uh, they still have that ward on the cliff as well. That kind of helps a lot. 50 seconds. I'm sure they'd rather take a fight. They were. I think they were expecting Vega to be in there. It's, it's such a problem though. Like, at least you're fighting around nighttime. That's that's an upside for him. Kind of like the the downside too of Vega. They will like, you, illuminate. You pop, They're gonna know. You, you pop a clips and you lose the vision. There's the ward. Will they illuminate Blast the Roche? They don't know. They're not doing. They With the Aegis on Tiny, it gave them a lot of fight advantage. Storm went down, he didn't finish BKB, except for now. So, good fight for Luna, good fight for some of the supports as well on Vega's side, but I think that was about even. It kind of feels that way. It's kind of crazy to see also FN. Like, you expect the Luna to have more advantage. You go, oh, he's only got one kill, but he's got 17 assists. So out, of, out of the 25 kills that Vega have got, FN's been involved in 17. Blaves help you with that, but he's actually having a proper influence in all the fights. Yeah, and he's transitioning to his next oh, item Poppy after this. Starts with the Shuriken Toss. They purge up, Matt. <laughs> Two 
for kills? Uh, yeah, they'll take that one. I think they only got one track out of that, unfortunately, but... And MB still doesn't have his Battle Fury. It's 32 minutes in. Come on, MP. You gotta stop dying. He's been one item away for like the last four or five minutes. But the problem is that finishing Battle Fury is not gonna be the difference in him not dying. It's just gonna allow him to farm faster. Like, he just hasn't gotten to his farm item yet. I know he's against very difficult heroes. Some of those ganks were hard to solve. Oh, Pile I die. Picked off by Iceberg. Very quick and easy kill. When you got the Orc and the SDs alone like that. And more importantly, he pulled. Are they him. getting out? I don't think they're getting out of this one. In comes MP. Looks in the Syrian chains. Doesn't get a pop. Gonna look for Iceberg. It's more like a game of hot potato with that gem. It's almost impossible for him to get this. Oh, I guess he could use. No Lincolns just yet for Storm Spirit. 800 gold passes BKB now. Luna's next item is a big one. What does he get? He still always has to worry about SD disrupting him. Battle Fury! Battle Fury! He's got it. Nice. Yes. Took 33 minutes. And they're still not coming out in the courier. I don't know if you're trying to keep it a secret. The Kuri is just idle in base at the moment, not bringing out his item. That's fine. Or he's coming back home. Yeah, he's, just, he's so mobile, it doesn't yeah, there even it matter is. that much. <laughs> Why even waste the Courier for your team? Oh, he's got Blink Dagger as well. That's... You'll step to bottom lane, combining with a Sunstrike, Deafening Blast, Mag, owned. <laughs> yeah, Sprint is not going to be what you need in that case. <laughs> BKB is really what he needs to buy. He's got an Ogre Club now. Went for Midas, of course. It's a good thing, good way to transition slaughter if you focus your time on ganking. At least you're getting some really good passive gold gain. But definitely gankable there. Goodbye, Iceberg. MP, you aren't get there in time. <laughs> the TP ball alive. lightning away. So controlling Rosh area is great. It is going to be Butterfly and Luna. Um, pretty good with the against the SD illusions. If he gets disrupted, at least his own illusions will be missing himself. It'll be hard for him to kill his illusions too, but. <laughs> Important thing is him not dying unless oh, he dies here. He's still got BKB up, remember? Hey, you gonna do? Storm like six, eight seconds to actually kill the Shadow Demon, and that's how you win your team team fights. Because then Luna is just running away from three arrows constantly. Instead of taking a two v three fight, she just has to go. Man, you got to give a lot of prop props to Pile I Die. His SD play yesterday as well was absolutely amazing. Made so much space for his team, and right then, great example of it. And Vega, they don't want to burn that by but they may, or else they. I don't... Secret, secret is not forcing the issue. The... No, they want to fall back. He can spawn Invoker, but he's got Lincoln still, so he'd have to get a melee range, or at least cast range of Thunderstrike. No more kills, and they continue building more items. Pipe and Greaves now on Bounty Hunter picked up. It's like every kill now becomes harder and harder. Once they get like forces and glimmers, it's it's even more difficult for Storm to get kills. And the BKB, like that was the worst thing about it. He did kill the SD, but he had a BKB, his 10 second BKB, to kill a Shadow Demon. Because the fight got a little janky. Oh, Iceberg. He's so close to him. They both have no idea. None of them have vision around here. The Remnant only gave a little bit of vision for a short time over the camp. And now BKB will also arrive on the Tiny. It's a good pickup. Protects him against Storm Orchid, basically. <laughs> The upside for Vega, however, is the fact that Luna, if she can complete the butterfly, uh, like her damage output is still going to be really nice during the fights, if she can survive. Sort of, yeah. Uh, I, I feel like Greaves should be able to offset a lot of that, though. Especially if they get a Vlad's afterwards or some, some other armor item. I'm just not seeing... I, I feel like Luna's so limited by mobility problems. Oh, oh blink. A... Avalanche. This time, FNG is able to dodge it. Turns the mana leak onto Forev. The Courier snipe down... But all of Seeker have already backed out. It's probably Talisman Invasion for the Luna. Yeah, you're right. Oh, that would have actually been it too. In, yeah. Like with him. I think the dog, you know who it is. Uh.
I'm just flaming. <laughs> teleport to the hypocritical. Teleport to the, to the fridge for a beer. Yeah, okay. You, the people do that all the time, I guarantee it. Uh, Storm Spirit. The long jump in. Here comes your tornado with the EMP. Uh, gonna put on a If you dive right there, they do guaranteed lose a Rex. You yeah. had to actually press that. You never know what's going to happen. Could be a fall-up stun. Could be a deafening blast or a tornado or something. And now his Iceberg quick jump. Very quick jump. Dodges the avalanche. That's what he had to fear. The the one second avalanche stun and the, the toss-up stun duration. That's super dangerous. You know, it took him forever to get a Battle Fury, but now there's already a, f a full Manta style over on... Over on the Ember. Yeah, that's all it took. I mean, in, in MP's defense, he did take the full brunt of pressure from three <laughs> heroes just passing by. Did, so, he took the full brunt of gank pressure, lane pressure from all of Vega's heroes all game. And with that, it allowed his team to create space. Are they actually... Uh, I don't know if that was a TP scroll that was used before recall. by Iceberg. <laughs> Pretty good, actually. Here they go. Yeah, Luda was pushing out the top lane here. No BKB going up. It's gonna be full. Iceberg is really peaking off. He had to go back for the Black King bar. This Bloodthorn could make the difference because it really will amp his physical damage, but Vega's absolutely lacking damage right now. <laughs> There's your jump. FN, Sunstrike, the pump. He was. Everybody on Secret played um, 